remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. In this essay, I'll go over the movie, The Lost Episode, and my pitch for season 6. While I'm still down for season 6, I'm actually a little worried because I've seen how some sequels have dropped the ball. I was one of the people waiting for Young Justice to come back, but when it did, I stayed far away because I heard tragic tales about its quality. And then there's Korra, technically not a continuation of The Last Airbender, but it's still connected. And don't forget Star Wars, that may be a movie franchise, but it's still a disastrous comeback. Anyway, this movie is just a victory lap. The five seasons alone are already otherworldly, so the addition of a movie is just seasoning on the five star meal. Let's see what the movie has in store. Trouble in Tokyo is an hour and 15 minutes long. Right from the start, the animation looks better. It has my favorite trio, animated backgrounds, blur, and shaky cam. It starts in media rays. A villain who looks like the blue and pink Pumacleats shows up and causes problems. He has shuriken, alluding to his Japanese origins. His explode like speed of sound sonic. Robin has apparently been taking ninja lessons because he bends his bird ring like a boomerang. I like how all the titans send attacks from off screen to hype up their introduction. The music is also epic here. When Puma flies away, the music transitions into another orchestral remix of the theme song. It's like a movie. Oh wait, Puma also whips out nunchucks, showing that Japanese heritage even more. Cyborg blows up his arm, but immediately regenerates. Starfire is too polite for a sneak attack. Amateur. After more chasing, Puma starts bombing the titan's tower. What's with foreigners and bombing towers? Robin turns it to him and executes his signature maneuver. He jumps from a high place, uses Lion's Barrage on Puma, then hooks himself to safety while tying up the villain like he's Batman. Puma speaks Japanese when he's tied up. While the others clean up the tower, Robin goes to interrogate Puma because he thinks he's in the Dark Knight. Wrong movie, kid. Apparently, Puma's name is Psychotech. He snitches and drops the name Brashogun. After that, he hits the sprinklers and disappears. He leaves no traces. How did he do that? Water might be the hint. BB suggests that he wasn't waterproof, but his comedy trio gets mad at him. It's funny because he's actually right. Robin decides to hunt down Brashogun in Japan, and BB gets his vacation wish. That was the inciting incident. A montage with a remix of the main theme plays as the Titans pack and travel to Japan. When they land, BB wants to take a tour of the comic place with his trio, but Robin reminds him that they aren't on vacation. We see some silhouette villain talking to someone off screen, starting a printing press. That's a hint. Starfire the terrorist just kisses some random dude on the street to speak their language. This is a callback to Go. Couldn't they just use a GPS? It lasted like 10 seconds too. Robin is rightfully salty. I can actually understand some of the Japanese despite never taking lessons. I don't know how to feel about that. A Godzilla ripoff attacks and has the same regeneration as Psychotech. Does Japan not have heroes of its own? BB and Cyborg are making clown moves. When Starfire punches, there are hit sparks. I believe this is the first time the show has used this. Starfire makes a clown move too. Robin makes a horrible joke as if the thing can't understand him. He used to have good quips, what happened? Leave the jokes to BB and go learn some game from KF. That's why a girl's kissing strangers. When all seems lost, Senigata and the Japanese police arrive to shoot down Godzilla. Senigata's name is Uehara Daizo. The movie seems to use slight CGI on the elevator thing. Japan doesn't have superheroes because they have the Tokyo Troopers. When Robin brings up a Shogun, Daizo says that he's a myth and quickly dismisses anything about him. He also says to leave the law enforcement to him in Japan. Suspicious. Teen Titans loves its mysteries. This could either be a red herring or an actual clue. BP brings the group to the comic place and he wants to take the tour. He's relentless. Everyone forces Robin to go on vacation since they have no leads. The Shadow Man presses some buttons to start the printer and another man releases paint from his fingers. The colors are CMYK, printer colors. He also says that he'll continue watching the Titans. This creates four monsters. Someone who's watching Sumo has an ocular jacket on. The cover of BB's book has a blue Astro Boy ripoff. Earlier, BB said he wanted to pick up some Japanese girls. Relatable. Here, a girl shows up and starts flirting with him. How convenient. Maybe too convenient. She says otaku, which basically means geek, which is what BB just called himself. Foolish beast boy. Kawaii would mean cute. You'd think someone who likes Japanese comics would know that. BB just chases her after she runs away. Starfire thinks she's an anime girl with her peace sign. You're not. You're a cartoon. There's a difference. Raven reveals she knows a bunch of languages, but not Japanese. What she listed is a weird combination. Donkey Gum sounds disgusting. I would need that. On top of some building, Star apologizes for her atrocities earlier and tries to flirt with Robin, who turns into a stuttering mess. Kid Flash would never. Batman would never. He is not Batman's son. He should be disowned for this performance. He already went through this and stranded. The two somehow start making progress, but just before their lips lock, Robin cock blocks himself by thinking of Brashogun. This man is a choke artist. Then Robin gets mad and says heroes don't do vacations, mistakes, or romances. He did a complete 180. I guess this will be his character arc. BB chases the schoolgirl into a karaoke place and he sings the theme song, but he butchers the lyrics. Actually, he doesn't. In Japanese, the song is actually this gibberish that Beast Boy is saying. 
only the English version makes sense. I guess that's why they play the Japanese version for goofy episodes. His moonwalk needs some work though. Then he gets swarmed by the girls. I guess he's over Terra. Psychotech attacks Robin, and we see more of his inhuman abilities. This man really did the Kaneki leg twist before Kaneki. Psycho brings out two sides, like he's a ninja turtle. All he needs is a katana and a staff now. Robin counters with bird rings, but he's not good enough. Psycho's three slices and the delayed effects were awesome. Robin tackles Psycho off a building and beats the brakes off him like Batman. The pink paint looks like blood and the flickering light looks dramatic. Daiso arrests Robin. This is the midpoint. Daiso says they don't make heroes like they used to. Okay, Kanye. The comic that Daiso throws has a reference to Gatchaman. Raven looks for a book about Roshogun because she is one of the two series members on the team. BB and Cyborg have to run from Yandere Girls and Shouts respectively. Starfire starts venting her problems to some random kid. The girl doesn't even say anything, Star just talks herself into a solution before seeing her team leader's mugshot on TV. The villain sends his monsters to attack. Starfire's opponent is the Astro Boy knockoff I mentioned earlier. BB's hot chick reveals herself to be one of the monsters. While Robin is in an armored truck, Bershogun sends a bomb to break him out. The cat girl actually uses Kawaii, Daisuke, and Urashi when fighting Beast Boy. I guess that's a W, although he and Cyborg are taking L's in battle. My man gets another kiss cause this is his movie. The animation is so dope though. The Titans get their butts handed to them while Robin goes incognito. He has the finger key again. Some guy thought he was dealing with Thomas Wayne when he tried to rob Robin at gunpoint in an alley. Robin beats him up and steals his swagger. Robin goes to a dangerous bar, beats up people, and interrogates a guy about Brashogun. The man says troopers don't like them talking about Brashogun. Suspicious. Troopers show up, but how'd they know where he was? Suspicious again. Robin rides away on a cycle. When he's cornered, Star takes him away. They almost kiss again, but are interrupted. Apparently the Titans all won their fights off screen. This would have been nice to see, since they were losing when we left them. Cyborg reveals that it was ink, not blood. Raven gives us exposition on Bershogun from her book. When Robin suits up, another epic remix of the theme's motif plays. When they get jumped by everyone, a silly montage of them escaping plays like in Mad Mod. The song is iconic. The song when BB turns into a dog sounds like a Persona song. The music has been really good in this movie. Bershogun is located in the comic book factory that BB has been wanting to visit. They should have taken the tour. They find Bershogun as an old man. He's the one that's being used by the shadowy figure. He was the one who freed Robin. That makes sense now. It's also explained that the first psychotech was sent as a messenger for help. The plot thickens. But why did he have to be a villain? And why couldn't he explain everything when being interrogated? Dazzle reveals himself as the criminal mastermind. He's on a syndrome wave and creates villains to capture them. This is why he ignored the Bershogun theories and captured Robin. This is how the troopers knew where incognito Robin was. We're in the final act. Both leaders shout their commands and the fight commences. The troopers are revealed to be ink monsters. I like the little detail of the Titans holding back against humans. When Daiso tries to run, Robin stops him and reflects his earlier comment at him. I guess they just don't make heroes like they used to. Poetic. Daiso jumps into the ink and turns into a monster. The Titans fight and Robin goes to Brashogun in the chest. He pulls him out and uses his signature move, jumping from a high place and grappling to safety. The old man fades into thin air and the ink monster explodes. Robin completes his arc when he acknowledges that they aren't just heroes. The two finally kiss after 65 episodes. Kid Flash got his girl in one episode, just saying. Cyborg got Sarasim in one too. In the climax, the Titans are celebrated as heroes. The Titans get medals like this is Star Wars. Robin reinforces his change by letting everyone stay in Japan as a vacation. The movie ends with Raven slapping BB after suggesting another vacation spot. In the credits, the voice actors sing the theme. This was a great movie. It had a theme. Heroes can be more than heroes. It had a character arc in Robin. It had a well-paced and eventful plot with an interesting mystery and plot twist. It had pretty fights. It had good music. It had all of the Titans' best traits and finally wrapped up the romantic subplot. I remember I used to consider this the equivalent of Starfire season, but she's not even the focus, nor would 75 minutes have been good enough. I'll get to season 6 later. First, the lost episode. The last episode has BB as the focus and Punk Rocket as the villain. It's only 12 minutes, half of the usual. Mumbo's human form is leading the orchestra when Punk Rocket interrupts. Mad Mod is in the crowd. The animation is very dynamic and the facial expressions are exaggerated. Blur and Shake are back. Robin and Cyborg are playing the raising game, which is a rare sight. BB comes in with a boombox playing Robin's song from How Long Is Forever. It seems like Robin and BB switch places. BB plugs his obnoxious music into the main power source and shuts down the tower. Starfire shoots BB in anger, which is very out of character. He couldn't hear them because he had earwax. Him putting it back in when they're all yelling at him is pretty funny. The alert sounds off and they fight Punk. Robin comes with quips. BB and Psy do their pterodactyl combo. The choreo for Robin looks insanely good. There is so much motion blur. BB's earwax is highlighted again. I like how Punk's playing is incorporated into the background music. The villain brings out amps and leaves the Titans helpless. 
The sound messing up Cyborg's circuits gives BB an idea. He baits Punk into increasing the sound until he breaks his amps. Beast Boy could withstand it thanks to his earwax, Chekhov's earwax. In the conclusion, the episode comes full circle, except this time, no one's listening to BB and his music because they all have earplugs. The animation looked great, but everything else was just passable. Now, Season 6. I was gonna go over the rumors, but after reading them, a lot of them sounded fake, so I'm just gonna list what I'd want to see from Season 6. Obviously, Starfire would need to get her season. The only logical villain so far would be Blackfire. The writers could also introduce a new space villain, because if you look at all the personal villains, they didn't exist until last season. This could allow Blackfire to be redeemed, because none of the seasonal villains, except for Terra, are redeemed. This other villain would need to be from the new Teen Titans comic though, like the past seasonal villains. The season would have at least two key episodes and a two-part finale where Starfire goes through a character arc and beats the villain. The main difficulty would be surpassing the stakes of seasons 4 and 5. Both of them had end-of-the-world threats, but 5 surpassed 4 by bringing in characters from all around the world and making it a war. Since Tamaran is in space, season 6 could try and bring heroes and villains from across the universe. That could actually work. There are a few characters I'd want to see, starting with newcomers, Wildfire is one. He's the brother of the Fire Sisters and was in the Teen Titans Go comics which is based on the cartoon. He could play a role in all of the key episodes. Wonder Girl is another. She was shown in episodes but was only actually used in the Go comics. The reason is because she's Wonder Woman's sidekick, and Batman, Aquaman, Green Arrow, and Flash's sidekicks all made appearances in the cartoon. She also already has a design and was an original member of the Teen Titans in the original comic. This means that Superboy is another one I want to see. Same reasons as Wonder Girl. They could have an episode together or on their own, but it would be cool to see all of the sidekicks unite. Robin would also have an episode where he permanently evolves into Nightwing, preferably in relation to Slade, like in the Judas Contract. Since the inspiration for the name Nightwing was Alien, this season would be the perfect opportunity for him to adopt the moniker. Maybe he adopts it in the Superboy episode after seeing a Nightwing on Krypton. He'd still have the same body and hair, but his outfit would change. It would be a great payoff to the Season 3 opener, especially since Robin was interested in the name at the end. Raven got to go white a few times, so it would be cool to see Robin achieve his future form as well. I also want to see Slade again. He's still alive, and it'd be a waste to not have him do something. He's also been in every season, so we gotta keep the tradition going. His daughter, Ravager, or Rose Wilson, was also in the New Teen Titans comics, and could make an appearance with him. You could throw Jericho in there too. I also want to see Red X. He's too cool to not follow up on. You should get another episode focused on him. Speaking of episodes, I want a Hive episode that resolves the subplot of Jinx's face turn. Maybe her relationship to King Kid Flash could be expanded upon. As for character-based episodes, it'd be cool if Starfire had an episode where Troc no longer affected her and Cyborg had one where the human side of being a cyborg negatively affects him. Finally, I'd like episodes with the missed pairings. Beast Boy and Robin, Beast Boy and Cyborg, and Cyborg and Starfire. Now, let's count the episodes. There'll be 13 in total. Four will be dedicated to the main plot, which Wildfire will be in. One for Slade, one for Red X, one for The Hive, one for Wonder Girl, and one for Superboy. That's 9 out of 13. Any of these episodes could focus on the unused pairs, so I don't need to count them separately. One more episode could have the jail psychics unite. 10 out of 13. The other three could be more space episodes. The finale will have to bring together heroes and villains from across the galaxy to fight one threat, and Blackfire could have a redemption arc if she isn't the main antagonist. Maybe she's the dragon to the greater big bad, like Slade was for Trigon in the key episodes. Obviously, you'd have to bring back the same staff for the season for it to really work, but I think it would be epic if it played out like this. That's my pitch for Season 6. What would you want to see in Season 6 of Teen Titans? Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.